Hello everyone, welcome to the Brainy Braps channel and we've been having some technical difficulties. I apologize for that and I hope you can hear me now. I hope I'm audible. So please put down your comments and let me know if you can hear me clearly. And I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday and um, I really hope that our fascinating story is going to make it even better for you. All right, children. So without further ado, um, I'd like to make a few announcements. All right, you can hear me now. All right, thank you so much, Aryan, Kaira, and Divyanka. Thank you, thank you so much for letting me know. So, um, like I said, I had a few announcements to make. So, since the last time I saw you, which was two weeks ago, we've released three videos. So, this was my favorite short thus far, which is Six Better Words for Young Part 1. And um, I really enjoyed shooting this one because I got to eat a lot of scrumptious delights. And uh, the next one that we had was Eight Better Words for Brave. So this was a superhero special short video. And um, the song that we used is from one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So I hope you enjoyed that one too. And um, we saved the best for last which is our masterclass and our masterclass was based on superheroes. So I know a lot of you are Marvel fans and I hope you really enjoyed this masterclass, which had Spider-Man and Black Widow and Black Panther and Scarlet Witch. So Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. So yes. All right. Hi, Adya Zawar. All right. I'm so glad you can hear me. Thank you so much for letting me know. Um, all right, so Naisha, Aryan, Driti, Kairan, Divyanka. All right. Then we have Mehek, Kenisha, Disha, Prisha, Sachi, Sanya. Hi, hi, Arika. Hi, Tejashree. Um, thank you so much for your kind words, Adya. All right, so let's get started with the story, shall we? So uh, before we get started with the story, I have a request to make. So if you haven't already done so, please hit the like button on this video and please subscribe to the Brainy Brats channel. It's extremely helpful for us and uh, we work very diligently to, to create these videos for you. So it would really be helpful if you hit the subscribe button and you could even share the channel with your friends and family if you wish. All right, so let's begin. So today's story is called the ghostly guitar. It's called the ghostly guitar. All right, that's the name. So my kind volunteers, please remember the name of um, this story and please put down uh, the name of the story in case we have any latecomers today. All right. Hi, Rikhav. Hey, Twisha. Um, Prisha. Hi, Prisha. All right. So Naisha, Naisha, thank you so much for letting me know that you enjoyed the two YouTube shorts as well as the masterclass. And... Um, we spent a lot of time designing this particular masterclass because we wanted every detail to be perfect. Um, from the script to the makeup, we meticulously stuck those uh, little rhinestones and um, to give you the whole Spider-Man effect. And then uh, we had the illustrations. We also edited it in such a way that it was very enjoyable. So, yes. All right, so yes, today's tale is the ghostly guitar. So how many of you here are musicians? How many of you here play the guitar? I'd love to know. So um, a lot of my friends play the guitar and I've always wanted to learn to play the guitar. So yes, please tell me if you play the guitar. Mehek, the story's name is the ghostly guitar. So ghostly means very eerie, right? When something is very eerie, very weird, it's, it's creepy, it's abnormal, it's ghostly. All right. So the story's name, once again, is The Ghostly Guitar. And this is what today's ghostly guitar looks like. All right. That's our ghostly guitar. So let's begin. So the protagonist of today's story is a boy named Jeff. Right. Jeff for short. And his full name is Jeffrey. So Sanya says she plays the piano. Wow, Sanya. You must have wonderfully talented fingers. All right. Sanvi says that um, her dad plays guitar. Wow. Uh, Naisha says that she loves the guitar. She's never played it, but she wants to. Yes. All right. 
So let's see. Let's see what, what Jeff does in today's story. I am not lazy, Beth. I work hard. Yeah, right, Jeff. My friend Beth rolled her eyes. So Jeffrey, or Jeff, is a lackadaisical boy. He's a very lazy, lackadaisical boy, very lethargic. He doesn't like doing a lot of work. Um, but he claims that he works hard. He claims that he is very hard working. So um, his, his friend Beth doesn't agree with him. She says, no, no, you don't work hard. You only work hard at figuring out the easiest way to do things. So Beth tells him that, of course, you don't work hard. The only way you work hard is that you try and figure out a shortcut, a shorter way of doing things, right? Um, to, how to get to the end point, right? The finishing line without putting in any hard work. That's what you do, right? You take shortcuts. That's not lazy, Beth. That's smart. I laughed. So um, Jeffrey says, no, I'm smart. I'm quite intelligent. And that's why I think of these intelligent things, right? But um, so he's not he's not very hardworking. So there was a word for hardworking that we've done in the teacher masterclass. So do you remember that word? It begins with the letter D. Sanvi put down the word. Thank you so much, Sanvi. So the word is diligent. So he claims to be diligent, but he is actually lackadaisical. He claims to be diligent, but he is lackadaisical. Thank you so much, Sanvi. Good job. Smart? Weeding the garden with a vacuum cleaner is not smart, Jeffrey. So Jeffrey is so silly that he's trying to weed the garden, right? To weed a garden is to remove the unwanted plants. So sometimes these unwanted plants grow and you, you pull them out. And you're supposed to do this by hand. But Jeffrey is so lazy, so lackadaisical. He's brought his vacuum cleaner outside and he's weeding the, the garden with a vacuum cleaner. So she said, this is not a smart idea. This is absolutely stupid. You're an income poop. Okay, I admit it. That wasn't one of my best ideas. I mean, it worked great on the weeds. Sucked them right up. The problem was, it sucked up the rest of the garden too. All the mud and most of the tulips. So Jeffrey says, oh, it wasn't my best idea because it definitely vacuumed the weeds. The vacuum cleaner sucked the weeds, but it also sucked up the mud, the dirt, and it also sucked up the flowers. So what was the point of the shortcut? Right? It has increased the work. So this is what Jeffrey does. He thinks of shortcuts that land him in trouble because he's extremely lazy. He's lackadaisical. He's lethargic. He's slothful. Um, we'd better hurry. Beth peered up at the thick black clouds rolling in. So now they're, they're, they're coming back from the post office. So they had gone to the post office after this whole vacuum cleaner fiasco because Jeffrey's mother had sent them to pick up a package. And there were thick black clouds rolling about in the sky. They were rolling into the sky. Now, the sky was becoming overcast. Now, this is a word we've done in the monsoon masterclass. So the sky was acquiring a grayish tinge and... Um, Beth says it's going to it's going to start pouring any moment, right? So there's going to be a heavy downpour. So we've done a word for heavy downpour, right? Another word for heavy rain, an adjective for heavy rain. So what is that adjective? It starts with T. So can you put down that word in the comments now? So you're right, Pooja Saraf, the boy is lackadaisical. Um, so yes. It wasn't the first masterclass, but yes, it was one of the first masterclasses. And Naisha, you got the correct answer. The answer is torrential. Torrential. Chetali Doshi, excellent. Savina Bansal. Then we have uh, Swara, fabulous work. Shlok, torrential. So torrential rain is very heavy rain. Right? So she says, oh, there's going to be torrential downpour. Let's move it. Let's move faster. It was late afternoon. Heavy clouds gathered above us, turning the sky dark as deeper space. 
So it was starting to look as, as if it was, it was nighttime, right? That's how dark it had suddenly become. The street lamps flickered on. So the street lamps also turned on to make up for the darkness, right? People wouldn't be able to find their way in the darkness otherwise. So the street lamps turned on in the afternoon. Beth and I had just left the, the post office. My mom sent us there to pick up a package for her. Like I already told you, they were at the post office. They've just left the post office and they are making a beeline for their homes. They're going home. They're going to their abodes. Can't you walk any faster? Beth complained. I hate this part of town. It's really creepy here. So Beth says, come on, Jeff, walk faster. Walk briskly, right? It's this part of town is very scary. It's so creepy. It's it's spine chilling. It's blood curdling. There's something quite eerie about this place. It is kind of creepy here, I thought, glancing up and down the street. So when Jeff is looking about, he realizes, oh, this place is extremely creepy. And um, we were in the old section of town. So the area where they lived, they were in this older, more dilapidated area. Right? This was a very run-down area. Most of the stores closed when the new mall opened last year. So in the newer part of town, there was a mall which had opened up. And now all these stores had shut down in the older part of town. And it had become a very deserted area. It started to look very creepy, as if it was only inhabited by ghosts. Ugh. So, um... Don't worry, Rakesh, Setia, you haven't missed anything at all. We were having some technical issues and we were forced to start late as well. So, yes. So, I spotted a scraggly grey cat up ahead. So, the only creature they could see on the streets was this thin and bony grey cat. Scraggly, thin and bony, right? A very scrawny cat. That's all. That was the only living creature. No other humans no other animals. It darted across the road and disappeared into a dark alley. So now even the cat was nowhere to be seen because it bolted across the road and it disappeared into one of the alleys. The rest of the street was deserted. So the street was abandoned. It was empty. It was desolate. Like I told you, there was no one there. Beth turned the corner and broke into a jog. Now, Beth was desperate to get home because there was going to be a torrential downpour. It looked like it was going to start pouring at any moment, right? So she starts jogging home. Hey, Beth, wait, look at this. So Jeff calls out to her because he sees something interesting. Let's see what it is. I stopped in front of a burned out store. So Jeff stops and he sees the store that, that has been burned to a crisp, right? It looks like this. Before I show you the store, I'd also like to show you how this street might have appeared. So the street looked like this. It was deserted, uninhabited, it was desolate. And this is how the store appeared. It was completely burned down. All right. I stopped in front of a burnt out store. A heavy blanket of black suit coated its red bricks. So there was a blanket of black suit. So suit is this deep black powder that remains after something has been burnt. Right. So there was a blanket of suit. That's how much the damage was. Yes, it looked absolutely ramshackle Aryan. I stared up at the store's charred sign. So Jeff looks up at the store's sign and the sign was burnt and blackened and scorched because of the fire. I could still read the burned words, Sal's music store, right? Even though the sign was so charred, he realized, Jeff realized that it was Sal's music store. It was a music shop where you could purchase musical instruments. In the blackened window, I could make out a drum set and two electric guitars. So the window also had turned black 
and through the through the window you know he peered and he saw a drum set and two electric guitars what was left of them that is they looked as if they had melted on the spot so parts of the guitars parts of the drum set had melted because of this large uncontrolled fire a bolt of lightning suddenly sliced through the sky the bright flash lit up the inside of the storm wow what a mess so all of a sudden there was a, a flash of lightning right and the flash of lightning was so bright so scintillating that it even lit up the inside of this blackened store and in that moment jeffrey could make out that there was an absolute mess inside all those instruments had melted they must have been so expensive and they've been burned to a crisp and that's so terrible all the instruments inside the walls the counters the music books everything totally burned up now the street is so eerie you see the sky is becoming overcast even the shop looks extremely eerie right and um but jeffrey is mesmerized by it he says oh my god i want to see what's happened inside come on jeffrey let's go beth walked over to me struggling against a strong gust of wind so there was a strong rush of wind right the wind was so strong that beth was struggling to not move she tugged hard on my arm she pulled hard on on jeffrey's arm i hate lightning so she's scared of the lightning and she wants to get home as quick as possible okay okay i told her in a second so jeffrey says all right all right we'll go but in a second i pushed against the front door it creaked open so it opens up with a creak like so yes that's how it creaked open first let's check out the store he said come on let's at least go let's at least go look inside the store and see what else is there see what's remaining if anything survived this fire we can't go in there beth shouted the ceiling could come crashing down on our heads she said it's dangerous right the store has gotten weakened by the fire and the beams could fall on our heads and that would be a catastrophe a cataclysm a disaster a tragedy so yes don't be such a coward i said walking inside so jeff makes fun of her he said oh you're so chicken hearted so pigeon hearted such a coward so pusillanimous now i've repeated these words ad nauseum i've i've repeated them so many times that i'm sure they're emblazoned on your minds so i'm not going to show them to you again on my screen but yes so when you're a coward you're chicken hearted you're pigeon hearted you are pusillanimous right you're lily livered that's another term you've learned so jeff bravely dauntlessly audaciously walks inside he's taking a risk it was totally dark inside the floor was still warm from the fire so the fire wouldn't have happened too long ago because the floor was still warm it had still retained its warmth from the recent fire i could feel the heat rise up through my sneakers so it was so warm that he could feel the heat through his sneakers through his shoes an eerie stillness settled in the smoky room curls of smoke hung in the air so there was still smoke in the air there was there were there were curls of smoke plumes of smoke in the air but seemed eerily still something seemed extremely odd right my eyes started to burn so jeffrey's eyes start to burn something is going wrong i glanced around the store the fire had destroyed everything everything so this fire was a large uncontrolled fire So children this is a word for you to remember 
a large uncontrolled fire is called an inferno. A large uncontrolled fire is an inferno. All right. So an inferno had caused the store to burn down. And for those of you who are older, right, when you, if you're 13 or 14, here's a word I challenge you to remember. It's conflagration. So a conflagration or an inferno is a large uncontrolled fire. So a large uncontrolled fire, an inferno, and a conflagration had caused this to happen. And it all looked extremely eerie. So, like I said, the fire had destroyed everything. I can't breathe. <coughs> Beth said, coughing. So Beth is coughing incessantly. And she says, I can't breathe. And it's too creepy in here. I want to go now. So Beth who is getting scared. She is getting petrified looking at this scene. She says, it's so creepy here. It's spine chilling here. I just want to go home. Okay, okay, I said. I walked over to a pile of guitars on the floor. So Jeff walks ahead and he sees a pile of guitars, a heap of guitars on the floor. Their necks were twisted and shriveled. So the thin part of the guitar, right? This is called the neck of the guitar. So this part of the guitar was twisted. It was shriveled. It had gotten burnt and scorched and they had melted by the heat of the fire. My dad was going to bring me here to pick out a guitar. I told Beth. So Jeff tells Beth, I was going to come here to Sal's music store to purchase a guitar. But look, the guitars are all burnt black. Now, what is my dad going to purchase for me? When will I get a guitar? I want to go now, Beth insisted. If we get caught in here, we'll be in major trouble. She said, we, we are trespassers, right? We, we can't get caught trespassing in here, right? We can't do that. Hey, what's that? I pointed to a shelf at the back of the store. So something catches Jeffrey's eye. Jeffrey, I'm going to leave without you, Beth declared. So Beth, who's getting impatient, she says, look, I'm leaving without you. I ignored her and headed for the back. There on a corner shelf stood an old wooden guitar covered with soot. Right? So there was this old wooden guitar and it was covered with that black powdery substance, soot. So one of you had asked me the spelling of suit. It's S-O-O-T. Right? I brushed it clean with my shirt sleeve. So he cleans the guitar. And then I studied it, turning round and round. So he's checking the guitar. Beth, can you believe this? I said, running my thumb over the strings. So he's strumming the guitar. He's running his thumb over the strings. The notes echoed softly in the smoky room. This guitar works. There is only suit over it. It has been saved from the fire, miraculously. It's the only instrument in the store that's not ruined. Seems like a miracle, right? Everything else has gotten burnt. The walls, the books, the counters, the instruments have melted. But this one has been saved. It's just a silly old guitar, Jeffrey. Let's go. Beth headed toward the door. So Beth was getting increasingly restless, increasingly impatient, says, okay, let's just go. What are you doing? Okay, I'm coming. Maybe I'll take it home. I said, staring down at the guitar. He says, maybe I should take this guitar home. No one will miss it. He says the entire, he thinks to himself that this entire store has been gotten burnt down. Right, the entire store has been scorched by the fire. So who's going to miss one puny little guitar? No one. Let me just take it home. You can't do that. Beth spun around. That's stealing. Now Jeffrey has quite a questionable character. He is lackadaisical or lazy. He likes shortcuts. And now he's stealing. 
he's robbing something, he's pilfering something, purloining something. That's not cool, right? He'll probably just throw it out anyway, I argued. I'm sure it's water damaged or something. So Jeffrey argues and says, they'll just throw this guitar out if I don't take it. It's probably water damaged or, or something like that, right? It's probably gotten damaged by, you know, maybe when the fire brigade came and they, they must have definitely uh, watered this area, right? Ensure that the fire died down. So this guitar must have gotten water damaged. It doesn't matter. It's still stealing, Beth said. So Beth said, this is, you're still stealing something. You're still robbing something. And that's not right. So why are you taking it? Beth asks him. Because it's here. It's easier than waiting for my dad to buy me one. No one will ever know. Again, this fool, this nincompoop is taking a shortcut and he's saying, why should I wait for my dad to purchase a guitar for me? Let me just steal this guitar. Let me just take this guitar. You always want to do things the easy way. It's going to get you in big trouble, Jeffrey. Really? Beth shook her head. So Beth doesn't approve. She says, Jeffrey, this behavior is going to get you into trouble. You mark my words. So Jeffrey thinks to himself, yeah, right. How can, take, how can taking an old guitar, how can taking an ancient guitar that no one will miss get me into trouble? So he's very confident and he takes it along with him. Where did you get that guitar? I met dad on the steps as I headed up to my room. So when Jeffrey reaches his abode, he, he bumps into his father and his father asks him, where did you get that guitar? Uh, well, a friend loaned it to me. I lied. Jeffrey. So he he takes a shortcut. He um, steals things. He is lackadaisical and now he's lying. He's fabricating stories. He's lying through his teeth, right? He's deceiving and tricking his father. So yes, so there is one word we've done uh, to trick or to deceive in the Disney Villains Masterclass. So could you put down that word in the comments? Another word for to trick or to deceive. It starts with H. So please put that word down in the comments. So dad replied, great. Now you can see if you like playing it before I buy you one. So dad says, all right, I'm so glad your friend loaned you a guitar. Now you can see if you like playing the guitar before I purchase a guitar for you. So we'll find out if you're actually, if you are actually enjoying playing a guitar. So Swara is the first one to give the answer and Ananya Kanodia. Fabulous work. The word is hoodwink. So he's hoodwinking his father into believing that his friend loaned him the guitar. The word is hoodwink. So excellent work. Shlok, Harshal, Javir, Sanvi, um, Ingenious Mind. I don't know your name. Good job. Chetali, Doshi, Sohani. Fabulous work. Naisha Patel, the word is hoodwink. I'm so proud of you, Brainy Brats. All right. So the father believes his tall tale, his story. I went into my bedroom and sat down on the bed. I ran my fingers over the guitar. So he starts strumming the guitar. He starts playing the guitar, even though he doesn't know how to play the guitar. He's just strumming the guitar. He's running his fingers over the guitar. Over the old wood, scratched and worn. So he's touching the entire the entirety of the guitar. So the wooden part of the guitar is scratched. It has marks on it. It has scrapes on it. And it looks very worn. It looks damaged and shabby. Right? Either because of the fire or probably it's a very old guitar. But when I strummed it, when he played the guitar, it made a nice mellow sound. It made a very pleasant sound. So the guitar was still working. It wasn't water damaged or fire damaged or all those things that Jeffrey was falsely claiming. So it made this pleasant, melodious, mellifluous sound. I crossed the room and kept the guitar in the corner. So he's decided to keep the guitar with him. He said, oh, yes, thank God I brought it home with me and didn't listen to Beth. Goody two shoes, Beth. I should sign up for lessons tomorrow. I thought as I headed downstairs for dinner. So he thinks to himself, maybe I should 
I should do some guitar lessons. That's what I'll do. I'll go to the music studio in town and sign up for lessons. So he thinks to himself, all right, maybe I'll go and I'll, I'll join some music lessons or maybe I should wait until next week. So he's in two minds. He's not sure about what he ought to do. I'll have to think more about this, I decided. So he thinks to himself, maybe I'll wait and I'll decide. That's what I'll do. I'll think about it, right? So he decides to wait and decide. He thinks to himself, I'll see if I want to join music lessons. Remember, he's lazy. He's lackadaisical. He likes taking shortcuts. So yes. Lazy, lazy, lazy. Beth's words echoed in my head as I tried to fall asleep that night. So when he was trying to fall asleep, he couldn't do so because he could hear Beth's voice screaming lazy, lazy, lazy in his ears. After dinner, I had called her for the answers to our math homework. This boy doesn't even do his mathematics homework on his own. He called her up to ask her for the answers. He's so lethargic. She gave them to me, but she said I was the most lackadaisical person on earth. So Beth reluctantly gives it to him, gives him the answers because she is his bosom buddy. But she adds that he is the most lackadaisical person on earth. The house was dark and silent. Mom and dad had already dozed off. His mother and father had gone to sleep, right? They were dead to the world. But I was having trouble falling asleep. So even though he had hit the sack, he was having trouble drifting into a deep slumber. It isn't lazy to take a few shortcuts, I told myself. He thinks to himself, no, no, it's, it's not a lackadaisical thing to do. Just taking a few shortcuts, it's smart. I am a diligent person overall, so it's all right. I pulled up, pulled the blanket up to my chin. I finally drifted off to sleep. So he finally is asleep until I heard the music. Huh? I sat up in bed. I rubbed my eyes. I listened. So he's listening carefully. There it was again. Guitar music. Where is it coming from? Am I dreaming? I wondered. I stared across my dark room. So he's staring across his dark room, his dark shadowy room. Whoa! The melodious music floated from the corner. The melodious music was emanating from the corner of his room. How could that be? My heart began to thud in my chest. His heart begins to beat loudly in his chest. I swung my legs out of bed. They shook as my feet touched the floor. So his feet are shivering, he's quaking, he's trembling, he's quivering as he's trying to find out the source of this music. I crept across the room. So he walked stealthily, surreptitiously, very quietly across the room and gasped. <gasps> a man sat on a stool in the corner of my room. So a man was seated in the corner. He was playing the guitar. My stomach tightened as I stared at him. So while Jeffrey was staring at this man, he became nervous, he became scared, right? He was petrified, his stomach tightened. The man wore a tattered blue sweater and faded jeans. His dark brown face was lined with wrinkles. So he had a wrinkled, wizened face. His hair was rimmed with grey. His hair was tinged. It was coloured slightly with grey. So this is what the man looked like. So he was a wizened, wrinkled man. His hair was tinged with grey. And he was playing the ancient guitar. That's where the mel the mellifluous, is, the, the melodious music was emanating from. I listened to the music, a beautiful, haunting melody. So the music was beautiful, but it was, and it was also haunting. It was touching. It was soul stirring. It was wonderful music. How, 
How did you get in here? I finally managed to choke out. What? What are you doing here? So Jeffrey is scared out of his wits and he asked the man, What are you doing here and how did you get into my room? The man kept cl playing. Then he looked up and gazed into my eyes. So he looks up and stares into Jeffrey's eyes. You took my guitar, he said in a hoarse voice. So in a hoarse, harsh voice, he says, Jeffrey, you took my guitar. Well, yes, my voice cracked. My hands began to shake. His hands began to tremble. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was yours. You can take it back. I can't. The man replied. So the man says, I can't take it. Why not? I asked, confused. So Jeffrey is bewildered. He says, why can't you take it back? Because I'm dead. He answered. So Naisha has written that it's a paranormal event. And yes, it is. It is a paranormal event. It's an event that can't be explained by science. That a ghost has appeared in front of Jeffrey. A ghost, a phantom. A spectre, right? I gasped in horror. <gasps> You're joking, right? I'm going to have to call my dad. You probably never heard of me. I'm Will. And this is Gertie, my guitar. Gertie and I traveled a lot together. We played a lot of music. Right? So he says that this is Gertie, my guitar, and Gertie and I have were together for a very long time and we played a lot of mellifluous music together so you're right jeff jeff's blood curdled you're absolutely right will kept playing so he continued playing his body rocked gently in time with the music so while he's playing music he's also swaying to the rhythm his left foot softly tapped with the rhythm so he's tapping his feet his head swayed from side to side while playing the music. His head is swaying, moving from side to side. I can't stop playing, see? He said. Gertie and I were together so long. Even after I died, I couldn't stop playing. I love the music so much. I can't stop. I could never stop. So he says that he can't stop playing. He's going to play incessantly. Well, your music sounds great, I told him. I mean, I wish I could play like that. But you have to go. If you wake up my parents with the music, what will I say? Yeah, follow me. I'll take you to the front door. So Jeff is desperate to get rid of this man, to get rid of this phantom, this specter. He doesn't believe this man. He thinks the man is bluffing. And he just wants to get rid of this, this weird man in his room, right? This, this abnormal man in his room who is, who is saying these crazy things. Don't need a door. Will shook his head. Don't need any door since I died. He says, no, I don't need a door. You say you want to play like this? So Will tells Jeff, you want to play like me? Will shoved the guitar into my hands. So Will gives Jeff the guitar. Here, give it a try. He said. I, I don't know how. I protested. So Jeff says, no, no, I, I don't want to play. I don't know how. You have to go. Really, you, you have to leave. So now Will is, is getting really frantic, very desperate, very frenzied. And he wants to get rid of this man. I'll show you, Will insisted. So Will says, I'll show you, I'll help you. Go ahead, put your fingers on the frets. So the frets are these small metal bars on the long, thin part of the guitar, the stringed part of the guitar. So this, these are the frets, these thin metal bars that you see. So he tells Jeff that put your hands on the frets, your fingers on the frets, and I'll help you. I wanted this man out of here. Like I said, Jeffrey was desperate to get rid of this man. 
Maybe if I play a little, he'll leave, I decided. So Jeff thinks to himself, let me just play and maybe I'll get rid of him. I placed the fingers of my left hand on the neck of the guitar. So on the long, thin part of the guitar, Jeffrey places his, his fingers there. I rested my right thumb on the strings to strum the guitar. And then I started to play. I was playing music. I was playing like Will. So it was a miracle, right? It was a miraculous event. It was absolutely wonderful because he was playing this mellifluous, melodious, euphonious music, just like Will. Hey, how are you doing that? You're moving my fingers, I cried. So Jeff tells Will, you're moving my fingers for me. This is amazing. Yeah, see how easy it is, Will said. I can make you the best guitarist on planet Earth. So Will is ready to guarantee, Will this phantom is ready to guarantee that he is going to transform Jeff into the best guitarist on the planet. Whoa, I plucked the strings. My left hand ran up and down the guitar neck. So he's playing the guitar like a pro, like an expert, like a professional. The music flowed from my fingers, this mellifluous music, this euphonious music, these dulcet tones, they flowed from my fingers. I needed no lessons, no practicing. I was great. So Jeff, who loves being lackadaisical, who loves shortcuts, is happy about the fact that he was playing without any lessons. He was playing like a pro without having to practice. Sounds good, kid, Bill said. Want to be my partner? Want to keep playing? Will I be able to play like this all the time if I become your partner? I asked excitedly. Yeah, Willie answered, all the time. So Will says, I will, I'll help you play like this all the time if we are partners. What a shortcut. Wait till mom and dad hear this. Wait till Beth sees how great I am. So he just wants to show Beth that she was wrong. I can't believe she told me not to take the guitar. What a moron. So in his head, he's laughing at Beth. He thinks to himself, Beth is such a nincompoop, an ignoramus, a fool. Because she told me not to take this guitar. And this guitar is awesome. I'll be your partner, I said. So Jeff is very enthusiastic about becoming Will's living partner. Right? I was thrilled. Totally thrilled. So he's so exhilarated, so enthusiastic about this. About becoming a pro guitar player overnight. My fingers kept moving kept making this euphonious music. Euphonious is melodious. It's a deal, partner, Will said. I gazed up at him as I played. So while he's playing, he looks up at Will and Will started to fade away. So Will begins to disappear. He begins to dissipate. Whoa, my eyes grew wide as Will continued to fade. I, I don't believe this. He really is a ghost. So now, all this while, Jeffrey didn't believe Will was a ghost. But because Will is actually fading in front of him, Jeffrey finally believes it completely. That Will is a phantom. He's a specter. He's a ghost. He's an apparition. We've done this word too. My fingers continue to play. Are you still here, Willie? I called out. Are you still here? No answer. Will didn't answer. I kept playing. My fingers began to move a little faster. The music sounded awesome. The music sounded phenomenal, sublime, absolutely incredible. Better stop now, I thought. Don't want to wake mom and dad. So he thinks to himself, my mom and dad will wake up from their deep slumber. I don't want to wake them up, but wait till I show everyone in the morning. 
they're not going to believe this. So he can't wait to show everyone that he's transformed into a pro guitar player overnight. I tried to stop playing, but my fingers kept moving. So mysteriously, his fingers refused to stop. They kept moving. Uh, Will, I've got to go to sleep now. I don't want to wake my parents. Will, are you here? No answer. Will is mysteriously not answering. I tried to stop playing. I tried to put the guitar down. But I couldn't. Some kind of force held it in place. Some kind of force was preventing him from putting the guitar down at all. My fingers kept moving. I walked over to the bed. So he's continuing to play and he walks to the bed. I tried to set the guitar down on the bed, but my arms wouldn't budge. His arms weren't moving. The guitar rested against my chest. He couldn't stop playing. I broke out into a cold sweat. So now Jeff is getting extremely nervous, right? He's getting cold feet. He's breaking out into a cold sweat. He's a bundle of nerves. My fingers kept playing. I tried to uncurl them. He's trying to open up his fingers. But to no avail. It was futile. I tried to release my grip. I can't control my hands at all. I realized. Because Will now is controlling his hands. So Jeff can't control his hands at all. I took a deep breath and tried to toss the guitar on the floor. I tried again and again. So he's repeatedly trying to throw down the, the guitar. But nothing works. It's, it's a futile effort. The harder I tried, the tighter my fingers pressed down on the strings. Fingers pressing, moving up and down. He's going on playing. He's continuously playing. Playing and playing. Ow! My fingertips burned now. His fingertips were burning. It's like the skin was coming off because of continuous playing. My temples began to pound. His head began to hurt. Where are you, Willie? I cried. I need your help. Will didn't answer. I kept playing. Come on, Will. I begged. So he's beseeching Will to stop. I have to stop. My fingers are really hurting me. I'm getting blisters. Over the sound of the music, Will's voice finally floated to me. So over the sound of the guitarist's music, he could finally hear Will's voice. Stop. Stop. I told you. Even after I died, I couldn't stop. I love it so much. Thanks for being my partner, Jeff. Now I don't have to stop. I don't have to stop. Not ever. No! I shouted. Please! My fingers hurt. I have to stop. I have to. Please! Jeffrey! My bedroom door flew open. So his dad has come. The light clicked on. Dad stood there in the doorway. Dad! I'm sorry, I cried. Please help me, help me. Huh? Dad's face broke into a big smile. So his dad is grinning from here to here. That sounds great, Jeffrey. So he's so happy to see that his son is playing the guitar like a pro. That sounds amazing, incredible. How did you learn to play like that? Wait till your mom hears. That's excellent. Keep playing, keep playing. So his father doesn't know that Jeff has made a deal with the devil himself, right? Because he, he wanted to take a shortcut. He didn't want to put in the hard work to learn to play the guitar. So he doesn't know that, that Jeff has made a deal with the devil. And now Jeff is going to play the guitar forever. All right, children. So that is the end of the story. And I'd like to ask you, what did you learn from this story? So put down a few lines with good vocabulary, of course. But what you learned from this story? 
So did you learn not to take shortcuts? Did you learn not to lie? Did you learn not to steal? Or did you learn not to be lackadaisical? What did you learn from this story? So please put that down in the comments. This video will be uploaded in a, in a minute after I end this live session. So please put it down in the comments of the live session once this video has gotten uploaded, not in the live chat. So yes, so as I end this story, I'd like to reiterate, please hit the like button on the story and please subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this spellbinding story. I really enjoyed narrating it to you. And once again, I'm so sorry about the technical issues that we faced at the beginning of the session. And I assure you it won't happen again. We'll take care of it. All right, children.